Saturday the 29th of May. Two sessions at 9.30 and 11. Come and enjoy hot baking butties, tea and coffee, soft drinks and some craft items to buy. You need to book that as the maximum 30 people at each session. And that's the 29th of May and then looking forward to the 7th of August, a Transfiguration Tapas Evening. Again at St John's in the car park, depending on the weather, tapas and drinks served throughout the evening, £15 a person, and other things happening, quizzes and raffles. If you'd like some more information, you can see me or Diana later on. And we'd like to wish Christine Harvey happy birthday today. Sorry, Christine, we can't sing to you, but you've got all our very best wishes for a lovely day. And let's begin our worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Here we are, Lord, your people, your church, meeting together in your presence. We welcome each other and we welcome you. Make yourself known to us in new ways through our worship, our prayers and our understanding of your word today. This is your day and we shall praise you. This is your day and we shall declare your name. This is your day and we shall worship, worship a risen Saviour and our King. Well, good morning everybody, it's uh, great to be with you today to um, be able to lead in this worship and uh, we'll be sharing in Holy Communion a little later in the service. During the service, you'll find um, parts of the liturgy will be displayed on the screen, and I invite you to join in saying the words that are printed in yellow text. So our call to worship. The joy of the risen Lord be with you today. And also with you. Friends of God, it is written, You shall be like a tree planted by streams of water. Therefore I say, delight in your God, delight in God more than a weeping willow delights in being planted by flowing waters. We shall delight in God, who is the source of life through all the changing seasons. Delight in God, whose spirit never ceases to flow around and within us. Delight in God, whose rejuvenating grace is sufficient for all our needs. Delight in God, I say. Amen. Let everyone delight in God. And we listen to our first hymn, Jesus Calls Us Here to Meet Him.
from the Iona community in Scotland. So we join now to read Psalm 1. It is a happy person who does not hang out with evil louts, nor stands on street corners with gangs, nor sits with those who hurt and abuse. But even happier are those who are hooked on God's truth and fill their mind with it each day and go to bed with it in their thoughts. Such folk are like lucky trees planted on the banks of a river. They flower in every season, abound in green growth, and grow strong and tall. Not so those who damn themselves. They are like straw dust on the wind. In the hour of testing they falter, unable to stand up to the truth, but feel lost in good company. Like a friend, Christ knows his own, but the evil ones will perish alone. And I invite you now, as we join in our prayer of confession, to say again the words that will appear in yellow text. Let us pray. We gather as God's people, believing the promises fulfilled in Christ, we do not need to confess out of dread or fear, but entrust that God is faithful to forgive us and make us new. So join with me as we pray. How foolish we are calling God to think we could be happy when we sit in seduction's comfortable seats and scoff at your call to discipleship or run down the easy streets of sin rather than following Jesus, or idolise the celebrities and superstars, and not see you and those who wait on us in stores, restaurants and sports arenas. Forgive us, author of life, keep us from our silly selfishness, as we seek to become those branches children can climb on, as we hope to provide shade for fellow pilgrims, as we long to be continually nourished by the living water of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We are no longer blown about by the winds of the world. We are grounded yesterday, today and tomorrow in God's forgiveness, hope and love. Today, tomorrow, forever, we can hear fresh fruit, sharing God's peace and joy with everyone we meet. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. And we're going to hear from John's Gospel now as we hear our scripture reading. This reading is from John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. <clears throat> I have made your name known to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your command. Now they know that all you gave me has come from you, for I have taught them what I learned from you, and they have received it. They know with certainty I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, because they belong to you. All that is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine, and through them my glory is revealed. I am no longer in the world. They are still in the world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father. 
Protect them by the power of your name, the name you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them by the power of your name which you gave me and kept them safe. Not one of them is lost except the man doomed to be lost, for scripture has to be fulfilled. Now I am coming to you, but while I am still in the world, I speak these words so that they may have my joy within them in full measure. I have delivered your word to them, and the world hates them because they are strangers in the world as I am. I do not pray you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are strangers in the world as I am. Consecrate them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they too may be consecrated by the truth. This is the word of the Lord. There are many special moments in the New Testament, many places where we catch a glimpse of Jesus in private. Perhaps in those moments we see the real Jesus. Today's reading is one of those moments. The Gospel writer has captured those last private moments that Jesus had with his disciples before his arrest. Each Sunday, as a part of our worship, we often say together the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer, that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and others to pray. But perhaps we could more properly call the prayer that Jesus prays in this reading the Lord's Prayer, because it is, it is his own prayer for his disciples. It expresses the deepest feelings of Jesus' heart at this critical moment in his life and his ministry. It shows us just how much he loved his disciples and all of those who follow him. Even though he has his eyes firmly fixed on what is to come, the betrayal and the cross, his heart is firmly with his disciples. When we look closely at this great prayer, we can see what a rich expression of love and concern it is for each one of us also. There is real beauty in these words. They are a message of consolation to those he is about to leave behind. Jesus prays that his disciples, and we in turn, will have his joy fulfilled in us. This joy isn't the effervescence and ecstasy that is part of the religious experience of some people, but it's true joy, eternal joy, the joy that filled the life of Jesus even while he faced betrayal and execution. This joy can abide in us also, even in the midst of the world's catastrophes and calamities. Jesus prays that we may be kept safe. The, the Gospel writer says, Jesus says, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Even though we live in a world which can sometimes be full of pitfalls and temptations, we are the recipients of God's promises. And this 
despite our human fallibility and weaknesses. And Christ himself prays that we will be kept safe by God. Jesus doesn't pray that we might be spared from the conflicts and struggles of this world. He says, I am not asking you to take them out of this world, but I ask you to protect them. He prays that in the midst of it all, we might be able to walk in the truth. Ours can be a cruel and contemptuous world. So Jesus prays on our behalf that we might be sanctified by God or made holy by God. Sanctify them in truth, Jesus says. Your word is truth. How much our Lord loves us. It is when we really believe in this love, when we accept it and when we abide in this divine and everlasting love, that we ourselves can become lovers of others. When we do, we will be enabled to communicate this love to our fellow human beings in our world about us. Let us pray. O Jesus, we stand in awe of the amazing, incredible, incomprehensible love that you have for us. Even when you were facing betrayal and death, your concern was for those near to you, those whom you loved. May our love for you and all our fellow human beings grow daily as we reach out to serve you. Amen. I'm going to listen to the second of our hymns for today. The hymn, Great Charles Wesley hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
I invite you to join with me now in our prayers of intercession. And during this prayer, there will be a bidding and a response. So to the bidding, please reveal your compassion. If you could respond, loving God, bring wholeness to all. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let us pray. God of all things seen and unseen, if you had insulated yourself from the pain of the world, then your name could not be love, and our condition would be without hope. Thank you for being so personally involved, for revealing your complete commitment in Jesus of Nazareth. Through him we pray with hope, in him we pray with love. Let your healing love be known this day by all who suffer ailment of body or distress of mind or agony of spirit. This morning we pray for those persons we know of who are sick. We pray for Margaret and for John, for Wilf, for Jean, and John, and for Jane. May your healing hand be on them in their need. May they know the comfort of your presence, restoring them and bringing them peace. From our Book of Remembrance, we remember Winifred Seals, Mary Tinkler, and John Sandor. Be with all who remember them. May their memories be happy ones, bringing smiles to their faces and joy to their hearts. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your intimate love be known today by all who feel forgotten or lost, and all who are walking in the dark valley of despair. We pray for all of those who are facing grief today, those who have lost a loved one, those who have lost, perhaps lost, their work or their livelihood those who may be threatened with losing their homes, those who are suffering through broken relationships. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your fierce love this day redress the wrongs of all who suffer exploitation, injustice, abuse, neglect, violence or unwarranted imprisonment. We pray for organisations around the world who seek to bring justice to those places where there is injustice, to bring peace to those places where there is violence and fighting. Be with those who seek to bring uh, seek to bring reconciliation. Those who seek to mediate between parties who are aggrieved. Be with peacemakers in all places. We pray that today for those who seek to bring about peace in the Middle East, peace between Israel and the Palestinian authorities. We pray for an end to the violence that is affecting Israel and Gaza.
Please reveal your compassion, loving God. Bring wholeness to all. Let your nurturing love today encourage those who are gathering resolve to make tough decisions, to take on new responsibilities, or break free from some bondage. We pray for those who may be preparing to start a new job, those who may be beginning new relationships, those who may be moving between towns and cities, or even moving between countries to start anew. We pray that you would bring to them peace and a sense of your strength as they seek to uh, begin something new. Please reveal your compassion, loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your relentless love this day upset congregations that have become self-centred or even contemptuous of other churches. We pray for churches together in England at national and local levels. We pray for those churches that work together in their communities to bring about good and to share your love and your word amongst the people. We pray for the leaders of our churches. We pray for the Archbishops, Archbishop of Canterbury and York, and for the Methodist President and Vice President, for bishops of each diocese, for the chairman of each or the chairperson of each district. We pray that they may have a sense of vision for your church in our land and in our communities. Please reveal your compassion, loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your reconciling love today gather together the separated Christians and make them aware of the fellowship and mission of the one universal body of Christ. We pray for those who have not been able to return to their churches yet following the coronavirus restrictions. We pray that wherever they are, they may still feel loved and connected to their church, that they may soon be able to return to sharing together in times of worship and fellowship with their friends in whichever church they are from. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your inspiring love this day rejuvenate pastors, priests and prophets who have become weary to the very roots of their souls. Be with all of those who have worked tirelessly during this pandemic to ensure that the churches, church folk all around the country and the world still felt connected to their local churches for all of the work which was done to keep services going in, online and in other ways. We pray especially for those people from this church who have done their part in making sure that we have all been able to stay together as a church. We thank you for the work of our pastoral visitors who have kept in contact with all of our people and for the work of those who have brought us the online services each week. Please reveal your compassion 
loving God, bring wholeness to all. Thank you for hearing us, most loving God, with the whole body of believers in time and eternity. We want to love, praise and serve you, today and evermore. Through Christ Jesus, your true Son. Amen. And we pray together the words that Jesus taught to his disciples as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us give us those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In a moment we will begin to um, begin the liturgy for the uh, communion and then we'll be sharing together in the communion. When it comes to the distribution of the communion, I will bring the, um, the elements out uh, and serve you each individually in your seats. So if you could just remain seated uh, when it comes to that point in the service. If you don't wish to receive the communion, if you could just keep your hands in your laps. And if you do wish to receive the communion, if you could just hold your hands up so I know that you will wish to receive. And we'll be receiving communion in one kind, so just the wafers this morning. So if you're able to, could you please stand? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Please be seated. Here is bread, God's good gift. It will become for us the bread of life. Here is wine, God's good gift. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, all gracious God. By your creative word, you brought the world to birth. In your generous love, you made the human family, that we might see your glory and live forever in your presence. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours, all gracious God. When we wandered from you in our sin, you sought us with your steadfast love and did not give us up. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be our Saviour and Deliverer. Made of flesh and blood, he lived for our life, so he lived our life and died our death upon the cross. Death could not hold him, and now he reigns at your right hand. Blessing and honour, glory and power are rightly yours. All gracious God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company in heaven, we bless and praise your glorious name, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed indeed is the Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his friends took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup and gave you thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Father, we celebrate this Passover of gladness. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and the blood of Christ. Gather us who share this feast into the kingdom of your glory, that with all your people in every time and place we may praise and worship you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Heavenly Father, now and always. Amen. Sacrificed for us. We meet the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. Draw near with faith.
Let us pray. God of our salvation, we thank you for our communion with the risen Christ and with all who love him in earth and heaven. We pray that strengthened by his grace, we may serve you faithfully all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our service draws to a close, we'll listen to our final hymn, a hymn uh, Again, um, um, a more modern day hymn from Timothy Dudley Smith. Let Lord for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way. i 
to the glory of God and make the world a more fragrant place. I bless you. Amen. That you will give shelter to those who seek refuge from storm or fierce heat. That you may never forget whose tree you, are, you really are and whose life you share. I bless you. Amen. And we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Thank you. 